my name is Drata, uh, and you might know me by my IRC nickname, which is DCZ. It's a short of my last name, which is too long for anyone to remember. Uh, I'm going to talk about input methods on Wayland and how it relates to upstreams. I'm working at Purism, uh, and my task is to get the keyboard, the on string keyboard, working. Uh, is there anyone here who doesn't know or is not sure about what an input method is? It seems that everyone knows. So I'm, I'm just going to get a quick reminder. An input method is something that gives input, which is not keyboard and not mouse, to applications. So there are several pieces in order to get a keyboard working. If, if you have an Android device, you know that you can replace one keyboard with another, and you also know that the applications can pop up the keyboard when it's necessary. These are things that uh, have to be done in order to get a working keyboard. On Wayland, uh, you might remember the GNOME on-screen keyboard, which is part of the GNOME shell or matter, whichever way you look at it. Uh, it's a keyboard that can't easily be replaced because it's, it's already there, it's part of the repository, it cannot be moved. So, it's, it's in, in terms of a phone where uh, in the Libre Pi we are not planning to use GNOME Shell, it was a bit of a problem, so we had to come up with a different solution. Of course, we don't want to reinvent things from scratch, so we decided to build upon the existing standards. Uh, there are two very important standards when it comes to on-screen keyboard and input methods in general. One is the one that lets the application say, I want the keyboard to show up, and I want the keyboards to be, for example, numbers or text or emoji. And the other part is the thing that lets people replace keyboards. In order to replace them, they all have to have the same interface. So this is the second part. Unfortunately, uh, from the research we had to do, uh, there is the problem of upstreams. Uh, there are two, or actually three standards for uh, the applications, or for the exchange between the application and the, the, the compositor, which sits in the middle between the keyboard and the application. Uh, they are called text input. There are three revisions of that, and the upstream problem is that um, there's going to be many actors in, in this sentence. Uh, first, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Qt is implementing the first version and the second version partially, while GTK had external support for the second version and uh, had proper support for the third version. So it's kind of a mess that had to be solved. In order to do that, I tried to contact uh, all the maintainers, and one of them is Carlos sitting over there in the last rows. Uh, we came up with a improved third version uh, that we are trying to get uh, implemented and upstream into another upstream, which is called Wayland, namely. Wayland is uh, very important here because it sits between the keyboard and the application. As I mentioned before, the GNOME shell has its own keyboard. GNOME shell is also a Wayland compositor, and that's why it's in the right place to be a keyboard. It's not like any application can be a keyboard. It has to be related to, to the compositor, because it's the compositor that talks to the applications. So in the end, uh, that's, that's one part of the big puzzle. There are two more parts. As I mentioned, most people want to replace the keyboard. Well, maybe not most people, but there are going to be a lot of people who want to replace their keyboards with something else. And there comes the protocol that lets the keyboard talk to the compositor so that the compositor can talk to the application. It's getting complicated. But the protocol that lets the keyboard be replaceable is called the input method protocol, which is the real meat. Well, real meat of, of, of the whole puzzle. The input method protocol also existed before and it was implemented by Mali, if I remember right, but it didn't get really much adoption and it was 
rather unmaintained, so it had to be replaced. Uh, well, it had to be replaced not because it was unmaintained. That was a problem, but it wasn't really suitable. It wasn't really matching up with what the application is telling. Uh, it wasn't very well documented, so it, it needed some work because before it could be adopted. So this is the second part of the puzzle that I'm working on. And this part uh, is something that I am interested in, and of course the W.O. Roots developers, who are all uh, another upstream, trying to implement the whole puzzle. So the W.O. Roots is a very important project here. I didn't mention it before, but they are the people that we are working with directly, and they are uh, letting us, <laughs> they are the code base, uh, which lets us test uh, the protocols before we start the proposals in order to get upstream. Um, so far, so good. Uh, the input method protocol is getting implemented in WR roots so that whoever wants to write their own keyboard can take WR roots from my branch and start hacking on it. It's still not finalized. It might be a bit annoying, but it's, it's slowly getting there. But I didn't mention the third part. Well, text input and input method are really useful for composing text. Uh, it's perhaps more widespread than you think, but because it doesn't really show and they day to day use it, but there is a big difference between a regular keyboard and an on screen keyboard. A regular keyboard is just pressing buttons. An on screen keyboard can be smart. It can enter sentences, it can do prediction, it can enter East uh, Asian languages, which is really the same thing, except it's not presented on the keyboard. So the text input, uh, uh, the text input protocol and the input method protocol were really only concerned with that. And that's not enough. In order to, for example, play games or do shortcuts that are relating to the compositor, for example, if you want to do alt tab or alt f4 or something like that, you need to have a special method to input that because that's not some that's not text. So the two pieces that I explained so far were not enough, and I had to create the third piece, which was called virtual keyboard. I haven't. Uh, perhaps some of you have read my blog post where I talked about it before. I did not, uh, when I'm writing this blog post, I explained the situation, but I didn't know that I'm going to have a virtual protocol because it wasn't obvious to me at the time. Um, so in the end, we have a story with multiple actors, the WR Roots, who are a compositor. There is uh, No Shell and Matter, which is a compositor. There is uh, Hey Win, which is a security compositor. And that's on one side. Then on the other side, we have uh, Qt, which is the application. So the applications have to support, have to tell uh, people to pop up. That they basically have to support this as well. There's also um, GTK. There is also probably um, oh, okay. yeah. That's that. These are the, the two main tokens. So it might be some SDL. Uh, if they want to support it. But basically, there's so many actors here, uh, and so many upstreams that oh, I see someone shaking and <laughs> some idea might not want to support it in the end. Uh, anyway, uh, there is there is so many actors and so many upstreams uh, that it's really impossible to to get working at the same time. And my focus is right now on getting this to GTK. So I hope that with GTK support and with WR support, these protocols are going to get into shape because otherwise we, we really are in such a mess that no one else is going to touch it, I don't, I don't think. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the state of the input methods on Wayland right now. And I hope that they get somewhat uh, more uh, adopted and I hope that uh, we can get more Keyboards to work. Right now I am working on a prototype keyboard which is not written in GTK or in QT, it's just using raw Wayland calls, but this cannot last forever. If we want to have a keyboard on a phone, it has to be real good. 
so there are a couple of projects, um, namely eFord and Lawrence, that I hope to evaluate and perhaps use in the future. But if anyone else knows a good on screen keyboard uh, written in GTK3 or easily modifiable so that it can work, uh, I would be interested to hear about that. Um, yeah, I think. That concludes my research about keyboards in my work. Are there any questions? No? Yeah? Are there any work on uh, supporting uh, 3D uh, input methods? You know, the ones you see with uh, uh, virtual reality headsets uh, and so on? It's 3D inputs, you know, uh, the, hand, the, the handheld controllers where it, it measures when you move it around. Uh. Okay, so this is kind of a input method in the meaning of uh, entering coordinates, right? Yeah. So coordinates are, are not really, um, not, uh, that's okay. So basically uh, the, the, the part that I was dealing with was the, the part necessary to get text input with a keyboard. So we would... Uh, able to input like things like handwriting recognition or if you wanted you, uh, a 3D input method you could write letters in the air or something like that but it, it would always result in text. Uh, there is nothing stopping uh, you from having a 3D joystick uh, but then if you wanted to go to Wayland you would have to get another completely separate protocol like one of them would be to connect the, uh, the application to the compositor and the other part would be the compositor connecting to the device directly. So if you wanted to do some fancy devices that, that would not strictly be called input method in the same sense but it could be done I think. So you mentioned that uh, GNOME Shell has its own built-in on-screen keyboard or might have how you look at it. Um, it seems like with the, with the work you're describing, is, it, is that something you'd look at moving out of the shell uh, to allow all the advantages you just described of being able to swap in other keyboards and so on without having to modify the shell itself? Or are you not planning to touch the existing on-screen keyboard stuff in the sh in the shell and just look at the, the, the uh, phone size use case for not using the shell as a compositor? Oh, yeah, uh, I am not currently planning to, to touch anything inside the GNOME Shell or, or Matter because we are replacing GNOME Shell with our own solution well, which we hope might become the next GNOME Shell if wins are, if, if, if everything goes right. Uh, but uh, I hope that if, if there is some work on the, on the GNOME Shell keyboard we can share the basic like some, some stuff like uh, text prediction for example. I, I, I will have to talk more about this with, with Carlos who is uh, dealing with the, the Shell keyboard, but uh, not everything will be reused. Um, if there is no reuse, then I, I don't really see uh, well, the, the, the path to get involved. Any other questions? Doesn't seem like it. Thanks.